الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما <تصفيق> يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Or you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except on the state of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, empower in our hearts the Iman and guide us and bestow upon us the gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Amma ba'd, toward the end of Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying how to have the, the assurance, the firmness on the heart. In the saying exactly in the ayah, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادٍ And we relate to you from the news of the messenger with that which we put reassurance in your heart and make firm your heart. And it came to you in this, in the Quran, in this particular surah, as Ibn Abbas said, Al-Haqq, the truth, wa Mawida is a reminder or instruction, wa Dhikra is a remembrance. And then the believer, just reflecting on this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intending to provide and bestow upon his prophet this firmness in the heart. And the firmness of the heart is needed and is a necessity for the path. It is in reality, everyone is in need of this assurance into the heart, of this comfort in the heart, of this tranquility in the heart. Without it, a person will not be able truly to, be, to, to strive, to struggle, to have the power, to have the strength, to have the patience, to have the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without this tathweet. Therefore, the tathweet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gifting to his Prophet, especially in this period that the Prophet ﷺ was in, and the time when Surah Hud was also revealed with Surah Yunus after Surah Al-Isra. And in Surah Al-Isra, all of you know, the great honoring of the Prophet ﷺ by having the night journey and the ascension to the beyond the seventh heaven. But later, and we know that he already lost Khadija and he lost his uncle uh, Abu Talib who was protecting him from the canning and the schemes of uh, people of Quraysh. So he was وسلم, enduring a very, uh, you know, let's say a lot of trial, a lot of hardship. And here comes this ayah to provide the Prophet ﷺ that firmness in the heart, that power, that strength, that all of us we need. So if we dig into the meaning of it, as in the Arabic language, at tathbitu is qala intifa'u zalzala wa intifa'u al-iftira, is to negate the fact for a heart to be shaky, to her heart to be confused. With such, you know, grant, someone will be able to uh, counter back doubts to counter back the whispering, to have strong strength, to have strong willpower, to have strong reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the firmness of the heart is a necessity. It's not something optional that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, Oh Allah, give firmness on my heart, or bestow on my heart reassurance or such a thing. No, it is a necessity. It is a necessity without it, a person will be slowly getting to be distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a necessity for someone to drink water to have water for their life the necessity for the life of the iman is that firmness of the heart is this firmness of the heart it is indeed this firmness what provides that tranquility and this tranquility which will be the engine and the, prov the provider of patience so if you do not have this firmness in the heart 
this tranquility in the heart, then someone will not be able to be patient. Someone will not be able to have the power and the strength to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone will be like, subhanAllah, frivolous. Someone will be like shaky. Someone will be like scared because into the furnace of the heart, someone will be able to stand against fear. And we're not talking about any fear because the fear is innate in the human being, is part of our nature. But we fear that will block you, that will stop you from doing, having that strength to struggle, that having that strength to continue to strive in the sake of Allah, so you be able to fulfill the purpose of your life. So this necessity of the firmness that one needs to have in his heart and her heart, it is something so great and something important and crucial in the life of the believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how to get this firmness in the heart. How to get it. It's not by just making dua. There is some element that someone needs to adhere to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them and help them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in this ayah, the fact we will be able to blow and subhanallah the seed or to plant the seed of the firmness, of the assurance, of this tranquility in your heart. So you'll have the strength to struggle, the strength to strive, to the strength to defeat fear, the strength to counter back and chase out and spare yourself from all the doubt and the confusion is by studying and reflecting on the news of the Prophet. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what he said. قَالَ وَكُلَّ نَقُصُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهُ فُؤَادِكَ اللَّامُ هُنَا لَمُ تَعْلِيمُ And we are related to you, the news of the messenger. So we will have or like put firmness on your heart with that which we reassure your heart. So here in the reflection of the, of the stories of the messenger, you know, contained in Surah Hud, just contained in Surah Hud, because all of them, subhanAllah, all over the Qur'an. So contained in Surah Hud, you will be able, in reality, to help yourself gain and attain this firmness in your heart. Now, when you read, like, in the general reading of the surah, in general reading of the door, the third thing that you will, you know, observe and you will be clear to you, that all the nations, all the people that they have been sent to a messenger, all of them, they reacted the same way. All of them, they reacted, rebelling against the messenger. All of them, subhanAllah, they were like enemy to the messenger. All of them, they were arrogant, stubborn, except those who believed and accepted the belief. Now, with all, subhanAllah, their way how they reacted, but in the same time from this different times, different epochs, their way of reasoning, their way of thinking is different. This is to give you a guidance that the only way, that the only way for the maturity of reason to be attained, for a sound thinking to be achieved, is only by accepting guidance. It's only by accepting the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only by accepting the guidance of Allah. So you see, throughout all these generations, all of them they've been seven, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relate to us their ending. Now, let's ask subhanAllah, how the stories of a prophet, past the stories, will be helping us to gain this firmness of the, of the, uh, of the heart. Of course, it's about the lesson inside them. But what it carry in them, the news of the, uh, prophet, uh, the, news of the messenger? It carry in them, your brother, respect and sister, the truth. The manifestation of the truth in reality, in history. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks, he speaks the truth. Now, these words of the truth, how it come to be manifested in reality? In history, it has been manifested in the life of the prophets. So when you read and you study and you ponder on the news of the messenger, you are actually studying the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which governed the humankind. You're going to study the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, with the prophet and how he helping them and how subhanahu wa ta'ala stand against with his prophet against the disbelievers and against the wrongdoers so this is is the truth manifested in reality manifested in history that what it means the news of the messenger that's what it means for this reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the uh, the ayah after he said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the news intending to put assurance and tranquility in your heart what he said after it and in this, in this Quran, particularly you're talking about this surah, the haqq, the truth, wa reminder and remembrance, and instruction. So when we say al-haqq, 
then you understand that the only the only way to have a sound reason to have a sound thinking to have a right guidance only if it is built on a foundation of the truth so you find subhanallah the greatest scientists but their foundation of reasoning it is bottle then they will not reach the haq they will not attain the truth because what's the meaning of the truth did you ask yourself to define the truth it's very simple the truth everything that has been said everything that has been projected everything that has been prophesized it will come to manifest in reality as it has been told that is the truth for this reason you say once someone he speaks the truth he said something and people they go to verify he said yeah he said the truth so the truth is the manifestation of what has been told in the physical world exactly as it has been told the only the only words that will be manifested in the and implemented and achieved in the physical world exactly as it has been told is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the words of Allah the only people they project people they do whatever they want but always they make correction to their projection because they cannot say the truth they do not have the knowledge of the unseen they do not have the wisdom they do not have the power the only one who is the all-knowing the all-powerful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this reason when you talk to yourself in an inner conversation you talk to yourself is like this is the truth meaning this is what is going to happen this is exactly what is going to happen and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as a matter of fact he taught us a dua in the dua of his qiyam al layl he used to say Allahumma in, in Allahumma anta al haq wa qawluka al haq wa wa'duka al haq wa al jannatu haq wa al naru haq wa al nabiyyun haq wa muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa haq wa Allah you are the haq the truth and your words are the truth and your promise is the truth and paradise is true and hellfire is true and all the messengers are also true so and Muhammad sallallahu imagine the Prophet sallallahu he's talking to himself and you Muhammad you are true messenger so this is subhanallah to emphasize on the fact of the meaning of the truth because any saying other than the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have anything true except if it is taken from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, any foundation of any thinking, of any path based not on the base of the truth, then something that is going to lead you to error. Therefore, if you base all your foundation of thinking, because al-fu'ad in the Arabic language means the heart and also means the perception, means the thinking, means the reason. That's why in some ayat we find it in the plural way, say al afida which is encompasses the heart. And the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us is not only for feeling, it's only for reasoning. Qala ala falam takun qulubun ya'qilun biha. It's heart with which they reason, they think, they understand, they ponder. It's the heart. And therefore here we have the heart to understand, to ponder in the right way. They need to base on the truth. Where is the truth? It's in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one fact. The second, what is going to define the path, what the going to define the way of your thinking, is our this reminder and this instruction. So you say in this end of ayah, in the end of the surah of Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the foundation of the truth, how you base your way of thinking, and how you subhanAllah plan your way of life, based on the reminder and the instruction that has been contained into this surah, so you will be able to have that firmness in the heart. So when you ask Allah, I said, Oh Allah, give me thabat in my heart. You have first to adhere to the element that help you to, as a condition to attain that firmness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it to you. In a few, inshallah ta'ala, element that we go through from the stories of the messengers to design for ourselves a path that will be able, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to attain or to gain this firmness in our heart, which is going to give you true power into your heart. It's going to increase your true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to become someone who truly is servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one, and it is subhanAllah as aspect for us to ponder in it. The first one, when the people of Nuh, after 950 years, subhanAllah, they said, you know, always disputing with Nuh, and they said, whatever, if you have anything as a benefit, just bring it, if you are truthful. So what he said, and this is the answer of Nuh, is very important. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he will, he will bring it to you. He will cast on you the punishment. I have nothing to do, which is mean, we do not have nothing to do. 
You see our brother in suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them and bestow upon them his mercy. We see them. We see how the transgression and how subhanAllah today the world is filled with oppression, with transgression, with hypocrisy, with injustice. And you look at it, subhanAllah, how are you going to react? Nuh alayhi salam, he's relating you the mawidah. He's relating to you the mawidah. He's telling us, subhanAllah, he said, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, who will bring you the punishment? So as Nuh, he does not have anything to do with it. I only have to convey to you the message. Because if it was upon us to change things, is upon us the responsibility to stop what it has been started as injustice with our ability, if we can. But what, all what you do is for your deeds, for your own record. Not that because you're going to change, because the change only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this reason, قَالَ وَلَا يَنْفَعُكُمْ نُصْحِ My advice will not benefit you. The, the hardest I try, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already intended to put you in error, which is mean we do not have nothing into the matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had the full matter in his hand. And this is what will give you confidence into your heart. Because all what you do and all, all you act with all your best of your ability is for your own deeds. And if a change happened because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, it's not because of what you have done or when you do all this effort and nothing happened, you look at yourself that you are, you know, shortcoming. You didn't do well. Because if you're going to say, if there is one, if we understand this type of understanding, that if there is one who didn't do well in his mission, it was Nuh alayhi salam, 950 years, and he could not do anything. No, the aqidah of Islam, our creed teach us that you do the best you can. But the change in the hand of Allah. Which is lead to one, two aspects here very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala فَلَا تَبْتَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Do not grieve yourself. Do not have yourself to be worried. Do not be distressed. Do not have an anguish because of what they were doing. Why dear brother, respect the sister? To protect your own feeling, your own emotion. Do not say, Allah, I've been engaged in things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited you to give your heart to it. Because if you're going to be grieving and you're going to be sad about what these people are doing, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the power to stop them, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful, He's watching everything. Therefore, because when you engage yourself and you let your emotions, subhanAllah, to melt and to have sadness, then what you, go, what you are doing, you are actually conflicting with the process of gaining the thabab, firmness. Because the sadness is going to make you weak. And the sadness is going to, subhanAllah, make you to run away, run away from the reality. You're going to sink yourself into distraction. And this is how you become distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ Do not grieve upon this, this uh, subhanAllah, this transgressor. وَلَا تَكُوا فِي ذَيْقٍ And do not be even in, in, in tightness or into being bothered because of their schemes. This is their nature. People, subhanAllah, they see how transgressor today, how they killing. Say, subhanAllah, if there is something like this, it exists. Yes, it exists. For this reason, hellfire exists. To understand the wisdom and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other aspect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ وَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلْ لَهُمْ Do not hasten for them the punishment. Because when we hasten for them the punishment and the punishment does not come, it's going subhanAllah to reflect negatively within yourself. So you will not be able to attain that tranquility. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you these two aspects. Leave the matter in the hand of Allah. Work at the best of your ability. Do not grieve and do not hasten for them the punishment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in Surah Maryam, فَلَا تَعْجَلْ لَهُمْ إِنَّمَا نَعُدُّ لَهُمْ عَدَّ فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلْ لَهُمْ فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلْ لَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not hasten. The day when they're going to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has threatened them with, they're going to be remembered that they didn't live in this worldly life best a day, better day or a half a day. Therefore, we still think in, in the subhanAllah, in the time of the dunya, in the worldly time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to us in the godly time. And the way of the God of time, which is like the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, think of the akhirah. Think of the Akhirah. It's part of our daily life. Don't think it's like another word. No, the word of the Akhirah is part of this world. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let us ta'jilahum, do not hasten for them, you know, the punishment, because it's going to come. All the ayat, he said, 
the day when you see the believers in subhanallah in groups taken to paradise and you see the disbelievers you know thirsty being dragged to hellfire that's an aspect for you to have confidence in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you because that is the haqq that is the truth and you're going to see it with your own eyes if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah grant us to be embraced in his rahmah ya rabbil alamin this is an aspect so the aspect here al amru kulluhu lillah just free yourself from that sadness from that worrying and let the matter in the hand of Allah for you do all what you can do all what you can do to help for your life to subhanallah face your difficulties to treat or to deal with what happening in the world of this oppression according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the most important put keep that integrity inside do not ruin it with sadness that you have been prohibited to have and do not ruin it by ya Allah bring them punishment now 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 that's in the hand of Allah he knows what he does subhanahu wa ta'ala the second point your brother respect your sister is to safeguard our sound belief how we safeguard our sound belief by avoiding ignorance and the ignorance here it might be something that we think like absence of knowledge or do not know the fiqh it's not that the ignorance here the ignorance in the story of Nuh alayhi salam he requested from his lord for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spare his son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered in a way that Nuh forget that he was a messenger that Nuh forget the whole striving he did for 950 years he asked for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy to spare his son Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala innahu laysa min he's not from your family this is aqid ya Nuh if you're saying this son is yours therefore you are ignorant ya Nuh if you are asking me of things that of things that you do not know about you are ignorant Therefore, do not ask me about what things that you do not know. Do not. Inni a'iduka. I warn you to not be among the ignorant. And Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, the way he reacted, he said, Ya Allah, unless you forgive me and accept my repentance, I will be one of the losers. Do you brother respect his sister? This is, takes time. I will invite everyone to take their time after the khutbah to think about it. He's requesting from a heart merciful father, a parent, and it's normal. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him. And look today people, subhanAllah, they ran into system or ways out of ignorance. Because what is ignorance, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thing without knowledge, you are taking refuge or asking or helping, asking help for things that in based on falsehood, it does not have truth. As Allah mentioned, the truth is only in the Quran. Then you are ignorant. We still, subhanAllah, after the, the world is filled with hypocrisy, people still thinking about political solution or political the way, subhanAllah, some of the members of the community, they said, you have to vote, you have to do this. They say, you have to be, subhanAllah, someone who's not ignorant. Because it's very clear. Allah make it to you very clear. And he knew, make the comparison. No asking for his son to have mercy on him, he became ignorant that he's begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be forgiven. So imagine people they are wanting to have solution or help from other than Allah on a system that's based on falsehood. When it becomes true to you and clear, that is pure hypocrisy. For the believers, subhanAllah, if you do not, because when you do such a thing, then you are opening the gate into your heart to have in it, subhanAllah, other element other than the words of Allah, other than the base of the truth that is going, subhanAllah, to feed your heart, feed your perception. Therefore, you're going to lose the soundness of the perception, the soundness of the way of thinking. The third point, it is the strongest element that make you the most powerful person in the whole universe and i say in the whole universe why because allah will be with you and if allah with you you are the most powerful it is in the story of food who didn't have a clear evidence he didn't have miracle he has his trust in allah when he faces people Allah. i put all my trust in allah i rely on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do whatever you want to do against me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us that the trust of of, uh, of Hud alayhi salam made him to be the most powerful among them. It was the great challenge and it was the great power in the heart 
of food of iman that defeated his people. Where is your trust? And when you say trust, subhanAllah, is that heart that rely totally in Allah and they don't really care about anything else in the universe. Be it, you know, people's systems or transgressor, he is with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the whole power. Everything that is happening in this universe is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the trust. The next point is the story of Lut alayhi salam. In story of Lut, subhanAllah, when he was invaded by all these people, pushing them, subhanAllah, trying to commit that obscenity, to commit that fahisha. What did he say? He did all what he can. He did all what he can. And then he said, قَالَ لَوْ أَنَّ لِي بِكُمْ أَوْ آوِي إِلَىٰ رُكْنِ شَدِيدٍ If I had certain power, or a refuge, a strong refuge, or I betake a strong support or powerful refuge. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was reading this ayah, he said, Indeed, my brother Lut, he betake, he betook the strong, powerful refuge. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This element, dear brother, respect and sister, help you after the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your refuge will be, should be Allah. Look, Lut alayhi salam, when he makes his refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the last moment, in the moment when he cannot help, in the moment that he came at the, at the limit of his, all his effort, the help was already surrounding him. The help, they were the, the guests themselves, they were the help. That's when you encounter any difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already, already next to you. Why? Because you have that trust in Allah. You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you flee to this, subhanAllah, this powerful support, He's already with you. He's already next to you subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the Rukn al-Shadeed. And the last point is, in all this element, beautiful element, that's the whole thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not grieve. Do not let yourself, your heart be melt about things that Allah prohibited you because you need to contain, you need to preserve that intensity, that power in your heart that you need it for your striving. You need it to attain the firmness. And do not be ignorant. Have reliance on Allah as Hud alayhi salam. And then you support and you flee to a ruqn al-shadid. And the last point, and the last point, is what is your objective? What guide you in your life? What guide you in the life? Is the story of Shu'ayb. قَالَ مَا أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْأُسْلَحِ I only intending reform. I only intending the best for you. I only intending correction. The best of my ability. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ My success if it's going to happen is only happened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On Him I put my trust and to Him I return. When you only read this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us this maw'idah, given us this instruction, then comes, it came the order. The order to His Prophet and everyone who following you, following Him, among these followers are you. Qala fastaqim, be on the right course. Be steadfast on the right path. You and those who turn and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your followers. Qala wala tarkanu, and do not incline, and incline subhanallah, is not to take a friend, incline it just to, to go like slowly to the zalimeen. And then fire will touch you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establish what it need to be the foundation on everything to help you be firm on the path to gain the firmness in your heart. وَأَقِمُ الصَّلَاةَ Establish a prayer. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand this element and to attain the firmness in the heart and the tranquility so we'll be able to have that strong willpower, insha'Allah ta'ala, to continue striving on the right course and to continue, insha'Allah, fulfilling what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained us to do. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد. The way how to protect and safeguard all these elements that we have mentioned. You want to really have strong reliance on Allah. You want to not be ignorant. If not, you're going to be falling to be one of the losers. You want to really to control your emotion in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not grieve on things uh, that subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you, telling you keep it in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just take care of yourself. And then to make your goal, to make your goal to be clear, and that's what define your journey, that's what define the way how you're going to stepping into, into your path. 
All of that, subhanAllah, require one element, which is istighfarun wa tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the beginning of the surah, and istaghfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilayhi. Which is mean like the process of asking repentance and to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a goal in itself which is going to help you really attain that firmness in the heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the beginning of the surah, and He made it as a divine law that it helps you to have that good life, a truly good life. He's going to have you to enjoy a good life. And then when you know such a thing, then the believer, he already had the solution and the keys to that firmness of the heart. And then when you're seeing all what's happening around us, read in the Quran with which I will finish inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Hud, the people of Hud, or the people of Nuh, قَالَ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا Till when our order or the matter came, the order of Allah to punish them. In the other ayah, قَالَ فَلَمَّا And in the other say, ayah, قَالَ وَلَمَّا so fa is different that way. Falamma, when it came to them, fa fawriya comes instantly, came right away. Wa ala tarakh comes, it takes time. For subhanallah, it is according to the wisdom of Allah. So do not grieve and trust and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the people of Hud, it takes time. Qala wa lamma ja'amru. The only two mention in Surah Hud that the punishment and Allah retaliation came right after is for the people of Salah. He told them, you know, wait three days into your homes. Qala falamma, he used the fa, fa for the fawriya. And then for Lut alayhi salam, qala alaysa maw'idun subah, their meeting or their subhanallah, what is going to happen to them is at the dawn. Falamma ja'am, when it came, our, our, uh, our subhanallah or matter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. So to know something that Allah with which he concludes this ayah, to whom belong the knowledge of the unseen? To Allah. Therefore, the matter of victory, the matter of triumph, the matter of uh, retaliation, all of it comes back to Allah. For this, the last ayah said, For Allah belongs the knowledge of the unseen of the heaven and the earth. Therefore, and to everything goes back to Him. He had the one who decides of everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have confidence in your heart. So what should we do? Fa'abudhu, worship Him and put your trust in Him. Worship your brother here means all what we have said. Worship, all the elements that we have mentioned, extracted or derived or inspired from the story of the Prophet, that's what it means. That it is not only prayer and zakat, that's what it means. The foundation that connects you either prayer. And if you, you want to know, and if you want to know how your worship is, is it sincere or not? Ask yourself. Are you on the path of the worship that Allah mentioned here so you'll be able to gain the firmness? Ask yourself. And I'll tell you how you find out. Look at your dreams. Your own dreams. That's going to tell you how far or close to Allah. Wallahi, if your dream is still in making money, if your dream is in getting to the highest degree, then you are not in the path of the worship of Allah. You can have it. But not that way. Then let's start before Ramadan by looking into our dreams to correct them. And we have that aspect that Allah mentioned in the beginning of Surah Hud, Al-Istighfar wa Tawbah. Just do it before you came to the blessed month. Then you're going to have an objective, inshallah, maybe with the help of Allah. And inshallah, with the help of Allah, we attain to gain that firmness in the heart. Allahumma thabbit qulubana ya arham al-rahimeen. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma aj'alna min ibadika al-mutawakkileen. Aj'alna min ibadika al-muttaqeen. Allahumma anta al-haq wa wa'aduka haq wa qawluka haq wa al-jannatu haq wa al-naru haq wa al-nabiyyuna haq wa muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam haq. اللهم لك أسلمنا وبك أمنا وعليك توكلنا وبك خصمنا فاغفر لنا ربنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا اللهم يا رب العالمين ويا رب المستضعفين أغث إخواننا في غزة اللهم أغثهم يا رب العالمين اللهم أطعمهم من عندك اللهم أسقهم من عندك اللهم آويهم من عندك اللهم أفرغ عليهم صبرا اللهم اشف مرضاهم وتقبل قتلاهم في الشهداء عندك يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظهم بحفظك 
اللهم نفس عنهم الكرب وارفع عنهم الهم اللهم كن لهم يا أرحم الراحمين ولا تكل عليهم اللهم دمر الظالمين المجرمين المعتدين إنك قوي شديد اللهم أنت رب العرش العظيم ويا ذا البطش البطش الشديد دمرهم يا رب العالمين دمرهم يا كريم دمرهم يا قوي يا عزيز يا حكيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله